into a residential building and then further out that way. And it has made Chongqing a bit of a hotspot and a bit of a tourist attraction as well. Imagine walking down a street and hearing a train rumble above your head. You look up and watch it disappear into a residential building. Not around it, into it. Now imagine that same city has highways stacked eight levels high, bridges connecting mountain peaks hundreds of meters in the air, roads that spiral like roller coasters, and subway stations on the 50th floor of skyscrapers. You'd think I'm describing some futuristic movie, right? Wrong. This place exists right now in China. And when you see what they've built there, your jaw will hit the floor. Welcome to Chongqing, the city that makes every other place on Earth look like it's stuck in the Stone Age. While most cities are still figuring out basic traffic problems, China just went ahead and built something that looks like it belongs in the year 3000. We're talking about buildings so tall they disappear into the clouds, transportation systems that defy physics, and infrastructure so insane that engineers from around the world come here just to understand how it's even possible. This place isn't just futuristic, it's beyond futuristic. I didn't even realize that we were this high. I've been to almost every big city in Asia, but I've never felt something like this, where you're just standing in a main square and you realize that you're on the 22nd floor of a building. It's totally mind-blowing. Like, I don't understand how the architects were able to build a city like this. Let's start with the craziest thing first. There's a literal highway that goes straight through the middle of a building. I'm not joking. The Liziba station has a monorail that punches through the 6th to 8th floors of a residential building like it's completely normal. People live above the train, people live below the train, and the train? It just casually rides through their home every few minutes. When engineers said they couldn't build around the building, they didn't tear it down. They said, fine, we'll go through it. That's the Chongqing way. Here's the backstory that makes it even better. When they were planning the city's light rail network, this apartment building was already standing right where they needed the track to go. In any other city, they'd either cancel the project or demolish the building and compensate the residents. But Chongqing engineers looked at the problem and came up with a wild solution. They'd build the station and the building as one integrated structure. They added specialized soundproofing materials that reduce train noise to about the same level as a dishwasher. They installed shock absorption systems so residents don't feel any vibrations when trains pass through. The whole setup was engineered so precisely that people living there say they barely notice the trains anymore. It's become so normal that real estate agents actually advertise apartments in that building as a unique feature. But that's just the beginning. This city has over 15,000 bridges. 15,000. Most countries don't have that many bridges total. The reason is simple, but insane. Chongqing is built on mountains and rivers. So instead of flattening everything like a normal city, they just built up, down, and sideways. They built bridges stacking on top of other bridges. They built roads that twist and turn like a giant concrete snake. In some places, you can stand on a bridge and look down to see five more layers of roads beneath you. It's like someone played City Builder on extreme difficulty and somehow won. The bridges here aren't just functional either. They're architectural masterpieces. The Chaotinmen Bridge is one of the longest arch bridges in the world at 932 meters. It connects two major districts and handles both cars and pedestrians. The Qianximen Bridge sits 150 meters above the Jialing River and has a light rail running across the top deck, while cars use the lower deck. At night, both bridges light up with programmable LED systems that change colors and patterns. But the wildest part is how these bridges interact with the city itself. Some bridges connect directly into buildings at the 20th or 30th floor. Others link mountain roads that are at completely different elevations. The Dongshuimen Bridge actually has a viewing platform built into it where tourists can walk out and look straight down at the river far below. 
And here's where it gets even wilder. The city is so vertical that GPS doesn't work properly. Yeah, you heard that right. Your phone's maps will tell you that you've arrived at your destination, but you could be on the wrong floor. You might be on street level while your restaurant is actually six floors above you on a completely different road. Delivery drivers in Chongqing need special training just to navigate this three-dimensional maze. Some buildings have entrances on multiple floors because each floor connects to a different street level. You could walk into the first floor, take an elevator down, and somehow end up on the 20th floor of the building next door. Food delivery companies had to completely redesign their apps for Chongqing. They added altitude data and floor-level information because regular GPS coordinates weren't enough. Drivers use a combination of GPS, landmark recognition, and local knowledge to find addresses. Some apartment complexes have created their own numbering systems that include which street-level entrance to use. The phrase, I'm here, means almost nothing in Chongqing. You have to specify which here you're talking about, because there might be four different street levels all claiming to be the same location. The subway system is just as mind-bending. Chongqing has subway stations built inside mountains. Not next to mountains, inside them. The trains literally tunnel through solid rock to get from place to place. One station called Hong Yadong sits right next to an 11-story building that clings to a cliff face like it's defying gravity. At night, this building lights up with thousands of neon lights, making it look exactly like the cyberpunk cities you see in movies. Except this one is real, and people actually live and work there. The Hongyadong complex is actually a recreation of traditional Chongqing architecture called Diaojiao Lo, which means stilted houses but they supersized it. The building cascades down the cliff in layers, with each level containing restaurants, tea houses, shops, and art galleries. The entrance at the top leads you down through 11 floors of winding staircases and wooden bridges. When you finally reach the bottom and walk outside, you realize you're standing by the river, and the building you just walked through is towering above you. The whole experience messes with your depth perception, and the photos people take here at night, with all the golden lights reflecting off the river, have made it one of the most photographed spots in all of China. Speaking of cyberpunk, the Raffles City Complex looks like something an alien civilization would build. It's made of eight skyscrapers, and sitting on top of four of them is a massive horizontal building called the Crystal. This thing is 300 meters long and sits nearly 250 meters in the air. It has swimming pools, gardens, and observation decks all floating in the sky. From certain angles, it looks like a giant spaceship landed on top of the towers and just decided to stay there. The crystal isn't just for show either. It's a functional space with restaurants, shopping areas, and event venues. There's a transparent glass walkway where you can look straight down at the city below your feet. On a clear day, you can see for kilometers in every direction. The infinity pool on the observation deck creates photos that look fake because you're swimming with nothing but sky and clouds around you. The whole structure weighs thousands of tons, and it's all held up by the four towers beneath it using a complex system of steel supports and engineering that took years to figure out. Then there's the traffic situation, which is so chaotic it's actually genius. Chongqing has these massive spiral intersections where roads loop around and around like a spring. The Huangjiewan flyover has five levels of roads twisted together, and it takes 20 different ramps to navigate it. Locals call it the most complicated intersection in the world, and they're probably right. If you take a wrong turn here, you might end up on the other side of the city, but somehow, it works. Traffic flows. People get where they need to go. It's organized chaos at its finest. What makes these flyovers so complex is that they're solving multiple problems at once. They're managing traffic flow between highways and local roads. They're dealing with the mountain terrain that creates extreme elevation changes. And they're connecting different parts of the city that exist at wildly different heights. 
The result looks like abstract art, but functions like a well-oiled machine. During rush hour, tens of thousands of cars flow through these intersections without major jams. Traffic engineers from other countries have studied Chongqing's system to understand how they managed to make it work. The city also has the world's longest escalator system. The Chongqing Crown Escalator is over 100 meters long and climbs straight up a mountain. It's basically a people conveyor belt that saves you from walking up what would be hundreds of stairs. And because Chongqing never does anything halfway, they built dozens of these all over the city. You can ride escalators through tunnels carved into mountains, past waterfalls, and alongside highways. Its public transportation meets amusement park ride. These aren't just escalators either. They're enclosed in tunnels with lighting and air conditioning. Some of them have multiple sections that connect together. So you ride one escalator, walk a short distance, then hop on another one that takes you even higher. The longest continuous route involves three separate escalator systems that can take you from the riverside all the way up to the hilltop neighborhoods, climbing over 300 meters in elevation. For elderly residents and anyone with mobility issues, these escalators are life-changing. What used to be an exhausting climb is now a comfortable few-minute ride. At night, Chongqing transforms into something even more unbelievable. The entire city lights up with millions of LED lights covering every building, bridge, and tower. The Yangtze River reflects all these lights, creating this shimmering mirror effect that makes the city look like it's floating in space. Light shows play across skyscrapers, turning them into giant screens. Drones fly in formation, spelling out messages and creating shapes in the sky. It's like the entire city becomes one massive art installation after dark. The light shows aren't random either. They're coordinated displays that run every night. Buildings along the riverfront synchronize their LED panels to create animations that flow from one structure to the next. Sometimes, they display traditional Chinese art. Other times, they show abstract patterns or advertisements. During holidays and special events, the shows get even more elaborate, with drone swarms adding a third dimension to the display. Thousands of tourists gather along the riverfront every evening just to watch the city light up. There's also the Yangtze River Cableway, which is exactly what it sounds like. A cable car system that crosses the river, giving you panoramic views of the entire city. The cabins hold up to 50 people and take about five minutes to cross. During that time, you're suspended hundreds of meters above the water, watching boats pass underneath while skyscrapers tower around you. At night, Riding the cableway feels like flying through a neon dreamscape. What makes Chongqing so different is that it never followed the rules. Most cities build flat and spread out. Chongqing said no thanks and built up, down, and sideways instead. They turned problems into solutions. Not enough space? Build through buildings. Too many mountains? Build inside them. Rivers in the way? Build over them with impossible bridges. The result is a city that looks like it was designed by someone who played too many video games and thought, why not make this real? The city's population tells another part of the story. Chongqing is actually the largest municipality in China with over 30 million people in its administrative area. The urban core alone has around 9 million residents. Managing a population that size across mountainous terrain required solutions that didn't exist anywhere else. Every challenge became an opportunity to innovate. The vertical layout actually makes the city more efficient in some ways. Commute times are shorter because you can go straight up or down instead of traveling horizontally for kilometers. This is what the future of cities could look like. Not boring glass boxes and simple street grids, but wild three-dimensional playgrounds where buildings twist, roads stack, and transportation defies everything you thought was possible. Chongqing isn't just ahead of its time, it's in a completely different dimension. And the craziest part? They're still building, 
still adding more layers, still pushing what's possible. Who knows what this place will look like in another 10 years? Probably something we can't even imagine yet. So here's my question for you. If cities like Chongqing are already building the future right now, what's stopping the rest of the world from catching up? Is it money? Vision? Or are we just too attached to the way things have always been done? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if this video blew your mind even half as much as Chongqing blew mine, hit that like button and subscribe because we're diving into more insane mega projects that are reshaping our world. Trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next.